Alright guys, welcome back to Welsh Wargaming. Uh, today I'm going to be unboxing um, the Rubicon models Jag Panther. Um, I'll build it and then I'll, um, we'll have a chat about the actual tank. And then we'll have a chat about the uh, the rules for it in bolt action, uh, second edition. So um, you probably all um, you probably all have Rubicon kits before. They're really good kits, uh, nicely detailed, nice plastic models. Um, I uh, got a few of them myself. So, as usual, instructions. Uh, transfers. It's pretty much building the Panther, uh, but without a turret. <laughs> so, it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, that's the last thing. The actual kit itself. The main bit that looks really is it looks a bit of a beast, isn't it? I'm looking forward to building this. I'm looking forward to getting it on a table to be honest with you. Uh, it comes with it comes with both chassis. Uh, for the G1 or the G2 model, so that's pretty cool. Um, I suppose if you only use the one, you could use the other one as terrain. You could build like a blown up tank with it, maybe. Uh, road wheels, side skirts, the actual track itself, the different the different guns, but looking at them, there's not much difference. Uh, we'll have a bit of a chat about the gun uh, later on. You probably are the, uh, the Pack 433, Pack 444, and then the L71. So, uh, yeah, so we're looking forward to putting this together. I'm more looking forward to actually having a game with it. So, uh, I'll put this together. And then uh, we'll actually have a chat about the actual tank itself, and then we'll move on to the actual rules for the bolt action, and have a bit of a have a bit of a look at its profile in the rule book. So uh, yeah, so uh, I'll uh, see you in a bit. Welcome back, guys. So uh, I put the Panther together, as you can see. Um, yeah, again, a really nice kit from Rubicon. Uh, even the gun traverses look his degrees. Uh, inside there is like a little ball joint. This, um, the one side sticks down, which allows the movement in the gun, which I think is nice. Um, if you haven't built, built a Rubicon kit before, um, I'd highly recommend them, to be honest with you. They are really nice kits. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Wall or Games tanks, but um, Rubicon kits are really nice. And they do give you the option. So if you do want to build, build a uh, specific type of tank, most kits come with most options to build it. Like you could build, you could build this. Well, late war one, but it's a G1 or G2. There's only slight differences, but um, you know, if you want to be, uh, if you're that way inclined, you want a specific type of tank. Rubicon kits do come with the extra bits, and the instructions clearly show uh, which bits go with which model, which type. Um, the actual extra bits that come with it, uh, you get the two type of um, hulls, uh, the G1 and G2. There's only slightly differences on the back. Um, you get you also don't get the extra wheels, otherwise you've got to build two panthers in one kit, which is sad. Um, you do get though the extra guns and the gun man, the gun mantlet. So when I was looking at the kit that's left, if you really did want to, for like a scenario, whatever's left, you could stick on this and then um, sort of make this into a, um, a dug in panther if you really, if you wanted to. So you're getting like two for one maybe. Uh, could be good for a scenario or something like that, like a dug in panther along. Along the hedge line, and the enemy is trying to go take it out because it's causing havoc. Um, yeah, so it's nice that it comes with these extra bits. Like I said, if you wanted to, you could build a built in one because it doesn't come with two um, two sets of wheels and tracks. Or well, you could have had two Panthers, uh, Jag Panthers. So, yeah. So, um, we'll have a chat about the actual tank itself, and then uh, we'll go on to the actual bolt action rules for then. So, like all tanks, the main thing is the gun. Um, so, it carries the um, 88 meter, uh, 88 millimeter, sorry, Pack 43, Pack 43 4, and or the R71. Now, the Panther is ba it's based on the Panther tank, as like the, the name, the Jag Panther, which basically just means hunting Panther. Um, in the Panther, it only had the uh, the 76 millimeter, although it's still a pretty good gun, high velocity gun. Um, we all know the Pack 43. 
he's a bit of a he's a bit of a monster, and uh, yeah, R seventy one as well. So um, the reason behind these German tank destroyers, um, turtleless tanks, is basically I think the time late war Germany was sort of fighting a defensive battle, um, so these are pretty good for ambushing. If you dig one of these in, um, you know there's not a lot that can take them on. Um, the Russian IS-2, the tank, obviously if you flank them or get in the rear, um, like all the tanks, you're talking about big issues. But um, the good, well, the difference between these and the um, the Ferdinand is the Ferdinand's gun was, it had no traverse at all, just pointed straight. So it was not, it, it could hit targets out, so it was like a mile odd. But, uh, you know, you get up close and personal way, you, know, you had to actually physically move the tank to move the gun. But this, although it only had a 22 degree lateral traverse, um, if you're sitting this 1500 meters away from an enemy, where, um, within 1500 meters away, you're looking at like five or 600 meters um, actual aiming point. So if you had a couple of these along a stretch, you know, you're, you're out of a front, then there's not a lot that you can aim at, basically. Obviously, as things close in, the tank then starts to suffer. But um, this was. Probably, it's, it might be regarded as the best tank hunter in World War Two. Um, it's a, it's a, I don't think they built that many. There's only like 300, uh, 350 or something like that, or only 350 actually made the front lines. Um, as all late war German tanks, they had trouble maintaining them, um, actually getting them to the front. Uh, fuel was short, um, spare parts were short, actually train crew were short. But uh, these were a lot easier to actually make than turret tanks because there's a lot less engineering without a turret. So, uh, but uh, it's a nice, it's a nicely shaped tank as well. So, um, yeah, the guns are the guns are pretty beast to be fair. Like we all know, well the uh, the German anti tank guns, they're very good, or were very good. Um, so you're looking at uh, about 50 millimeters, like 150 millimeters of penetration on the gun, which the IS-2, the, um, the highest that I have value IS-2 is like 160 millimeters. So, you know, you've got a good chance of taking an IS-2 out. Because uh, I think the 160 mil was around the turret. So if you hit, if you if you did catch an IS-2 in one of the soft spots, you're taking them out at 500 meters, which is it's a fair old distance. Uh, especially in Russia, on the steppes, it's quite open, which is a perfect tank fighting um, country, if you want to uh, <laughs> go that far. But, uh, Talk about the armor now. So um, as you can see, if you look at the shape of the actual tank, the front of the tank is nicely sloped. Nicely sloped. So the front armor is 80 millimeters, but because of the slope and the angle of the actual front armor, you're looking at about nearly 140 millimeters of armor, obviously just because of the angle. So just by dropping that angle down, you're increasing the armor value without actually adding any more weight, which with German tanks, the whole problem is, was the um, the weight to ratio power was always was not enough basically, so uh, you're looking at the mantlet of the gun is hundred mil, hundred millimeters of armor. Um, you got the side and the rear then is fifty and forty, which you know you want the tank facing that way, um, sort of hidden, dug in, nice a nice uh, defensive position or ambush position. So uh, it's a pretty, it's a, it was a pretty, it's a, it's a mean tank to take on. I mean, it's a very, very, um, very, very strongly armoured, really good gun. Um, I think it's a, it's a really good tank overall. Uh, not enough of them were actually sent out or produced. It was a bit late to start producing tanks of this calibre. So um, it's like the Tiger II as well. Um, probably a bit overcomplicated. Um, it actually didn't actually make a difference um, overall. I think, like, lo I say, like, local battles, it probably, uh, you know... They've probably done his fair share, <clears throat> but uh, numbers always tell. You know, if you've got Russia producing 50,000 plus T-34s and, you know, in like two years and Germany's like sending out 400 tanks because, you know, they're building them to last when Russia's just building them basically just to send. So, uh, it's a bit, uh, yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the, the German way, I suppose, build it to last. And uh, the Russians just sort of throw them out. Although the T thirty four was a very good tank, so we can't take nothing away from it. Very, very well designed. Um, the actual Panther came about because of the T thirty four, because the T thirty four and the KVs outgunned and out armoured the German tanks. 
uh, especially the Panzer threes and Panzer fours. Um, the Panther tank was not. It wasn't designed from a T thirty four, so it didn't want to copy the Russians. But uh, it was basically made to take on the T thirty four, and uh, and then obviously this came about then after the Panther. Um, it's a Maybach engine, a uh, six hundred ninety horsepower engine. So uh, a big engine, but a big tank weighing only 46 tons, I think it was. So it was a little bit, I think it's a bit heavier than the Panther tank, even though we haven't got a turret. <coughs> um, they tried to put this gun in a Nash horn, uh, which was lightly armoured, so it didn't do very well. And the Ferdinand, which obviously everyone knows the problems with the Ferdinand. Uh, I don't think, I think half of them broke down before he even got it, to be honest with you. But, um, so uh, yeah, so it entered service in 1944, obviously... The only thing they only sent off 350 the actual front lines. Um, is that a five man crew? Um, so yeah, so next I'll be uh, we'll be having a look at the actual bolt action rules for it, uh, seeing what I can actually do on a tabletop. Um, we're soon I'll be playing the, we're playing the tank war battle. Um, I want to get this painted for that, um, just to unleash it on some Shermans. And some T thirty fours would be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so um, we'll go on now to the uh, the bolt action rules. Okay, guys. So um, the bolt action rules for this um, is three hundred ninety points regular, or four hundred sixty eight points veteran. Which is uh, if you're only pay, playing, <coughs> excuse me, if you're only playing a thousand points or twelve hundred point games, that's a big chunk of your army. So um, they're not very competitive, I don't think. Um, it counts a heavy tank, so it's a 10 plus, so uh, it's pretty formidable. Uh, but obviously, you're relying on dice, so uh, with my dice rolls as well, so uh, yeah. So uh, it comes with um, Tiger Fear, which is always nice. And um, the gun is obviously classed as a super heavy tank gun, and it's got a forward facing uh, MMG. So, actually, in game itself, it's a lot of points. Um, I I we do I do play higher point games, um, just so we can take big stuff like this and you know, because you buy the models, you paint them up, and you want to play with them because it is cool. Like we don't always play games like competitive games. We do just play games sometimes just to use the stuff we got. Um, if we're doing tanks with infantry platoons, we can, we play with only like three or four thousand points, which sounds a lot, but if you throw in a few tanks, it's not that much. You know, you only get a few tanks in here, especially German tanks. Like I think when we play, I think the G we're always we're always outnumbered with the German armor, which is a uh, well historically correct really, especially with the big stuff. Like I've got um, Panther, Tiger, uh, Sturm Tiger. Um, I got a couple of Panzer threes. I got a Panzer four. Obviously the Jag Panther now. Um, I got a couple of Stugs, which I like. I got a Hetzer. So um, I can feel the you know a bit of um, a variety of armor. And um, the last game I played, I took the Panther. I used the Panther. Uh, my opponent had a T-34 and an IS-2. And uh, my Panther managed to take on both tanks, which was pretty epic, to be honest with you. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I think I put a, I done a little short video for my mate Martin. And uh, <laughs> it was funny, to be honest with you. But, um, it was the first time he rolled out his um, Russian armour. And uh, the Panther tank took them both out. So I was happy with that. He wasn't very happy. But uh, yeah, it was good dice rolling. So yeah, so overall, this kit is a very nice kit. And it is a very nice looking tank. Um, I'm looking forward to getting it on the table. But uh, I would highly recommend a Rubicon model. So yeah, so uh, thanks for listening, guys. And uh, I do appreciate you uh, watching my videos. And uh, you know, leaving comments. I do read the comments and I do um, try and comment back when I can. So uh, happy hobbying.